friend, welcome to Vlogmas Day 17. If you're new here, my name is Madeline. I'm really passionate about creating a life I love living and making videos to hopefully inspire other people to do that same thing. This video is going to be a Wednesday and Thursday, so it's going to be a couple productive work days in my life. Tomorrow evening, I'm going to talk to you guys about a few of the books that really changed my life in 2021. It's about time to log into work. I think work's going to be really busy today. I have four meetings and it's our deadline day, so probably won't talk to you guys much during the day today, but we'll definitely see you Hi guys, I have not talked to you all the day long. It's been kind of a busy day. I don't know, I just had lots of meetings, but didn't really have to do any like productive work necessarily. I mean, it was productive in like planning for our next set of issues, but like testing today, I was just kind of like checking on last minute things. So that's good. Sometimes these Wednesdays get crazy because something like you find a bug last minute and then it's stressful, but not today. It's super cloudy and gloomy out. And I'm trying to talk myself into doing something this evening. And I'm just as much trying to talk myself into doing nothing this evening. So we'll see what happens. I was going to run some errands today, but I ended up just ordering stuff off Amazon. Super chill work day. I know productive vlogs are the ones that like people click on, but it's not very productive. I'm gonna make a snack. It's gonna be toast with peanut butter and frozen blueberries. And that's one of my favorite snacks. If you've never tried it, try it. It's so good. Can you use any of this? friends good morning i've had such a good morning so far it is 7 37 so i still have like 20 minutes before i need to start work for the day i woke up before my alarm i'm trying to actually sleep later so i'm trying to stop waking up at 5 a.m which i know is like the opposite of what most people are trying to do i'm trying to sleep in till like 5 45 or 6 because i just need that rest but it's not really working i'm like hardwired for 5 a.m now so i had more time than i planned on and i actually did like a little 10 minute guided meditation after journaling. I would like to have a meditation practice. It is very hard. I've tried like here and there. I don't think I've ever tried consistently for longer than like three or four days. Guided ones are definitely like, I feel like easier to start, but I did that guided meditation. And then I went on my walk and I have started listening to the Skinny Confidential podcast, which I had heard of a lot and I never listened to it because honestly, because the name, like it just didn't seem like it would be something. I don't know. I like my podcast to like go deep, but this one does. They have really great conversations on there. So I listened to the most recent episode, 418 and something about going on morning walks just like wakes up my soul. And I, I'm suddenly like, you know what? We should contemplate all of life's deepest questions. I definitely want to talk more about that on my channel because listening to conversation and having conversation about like, why are we here? What is the meaning of life? Why do we do the things we do? Like, I love those conversations. I often stop myself from having those conversations in this channel because I don't feel like I have any authority. Like, I don't know that I'm saying anything that's new or interesting on the topic, but I 
I'm learning that I limit myself a lot and I'm trying to stop doing that. I highly recommend that podcast episode. I'll put it in the description below. I have work today. It should be a good day. Thursdays are usually good work days for me because it's like a busy, productive day, but without like a deadline crunch. So I enjoy working when it's, I know what my task is. I know what needs to get done and I can feel productive in it. Jackson's home almost all day today. He has his last final this evening, which is so exciting. And then he's done with college this weekend. We're celebrating that, celebrating birthdays, just yeah, cruising into a great weekend. Tonight, I want to talk to you guys about five books that changed my life in 2021. Just a little synopsis of those, why I like them and okay, let's have a great day. Hi guys, we're getting a cat. I'm so excited. Okay, my friends found a kitten just wandering around their neighborhood and they went and took it to the vet and it's not chipped, it's not spayed or anything. So they're looking for someone to give it to, but I think we're gonna go Maybe get it during my lunch break. <laughs> I held out for five and a half years, very strongly, no cats in my life. But the smile on Madeline's face this morning when she asked about getting a kitten was too <laughs> sweet. <laughs> okay, we're going to get cat supplies and then a cat. gosh you guys okay I did not know when I was getting up this morning that I would be getting a cat but I love her she just slept on my lap for like 30 minutes while I worked and it's the best thing ever I'm getting a snack Hey guys, okay, the work day is over. It was a good work day. Working from home with a kitten is much more fun than working from home without a kitten. You know, it's only the first day, but she's perfect. Also, Jackson surprised me by getting the loaded bowl, it's buffalo mac and cheese, which is like a legendary meal. It is so good. If you live in Oklahoma City and you haven't tried buffalo mac from the loaded bowl, try it. Tell them I sent you. Maybe they'll give me a discount next time. What? You wanna come talk to the vlog with me? my new friend. Ooh. Ah. Hey guys, so like I said, I wanted to talk to you guys about the five books that have had the biggest impact on my life that I read in 2021. Most of these I borrowed through the Libby app, which is connected to the library, so I just check them out on my phone. This first one I do have a physical copy of, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. This is by the author Yuval Noah Harari, he, who also wrote Sapiens, which is another amazing book. Lucy's gonna join. What? 21 Lessons for the 21st Century is almost like 21 thought experiments. It's it was super interesting because it's kind of thinking about where technology, science is at today, and then where it could be 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, and then the implications that that has on humans and like our quality of life, our um, systems and structures and processes. It's different than any book I've ever read because it's a lot of like things that could happen or a few different scenarios of ways that things could come to be, but it's super interesting and brought up a lot of connections I hadn't thought of before, like ways that evolving AI would affect our morality as humans. Another one was Wild by Cheryl Strayed. This is not a new book, it's actually a movie as well. And I don't know if this is considered nonfiction 
or fiction, but it's based on this woman's life and her, it's like a memoir kind of thing. And basically, she's in her 20s and has kind of an identity crisis and she decides to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, which I think is like a three month long thing, just hiking the whole thing on foot. I don't know, I've been seeing a theme of people choosing to do really difficult tasks because of what you learn from it and how it like, it's like a fire that forges you. So this book was super interesting to me. I love camping and hiking. And so the idea of doing something like that, I mean, it's terrifying and like it, it was really, really hard for her, but also super interesting to me. That book was one that I actually like couldn't put down. Okay, another one, this one I listened to as an audiobook, and this one almost everyone has read by now, but it is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And I'm probably gonna reread this again pretty soon because there's just so much goodness in it. Like there's there's a lot of wisdom. Um, this one's all about making these tiny sustainable changes that over time compound and help you create the life you wanna live, become the person you wanna be. One takeaway I have from this that I think of often is how your current situation is like a lagging indicator of your future success. Whatever measure you're using, whether it's like weight or how fast you're running or how many followers you have or how much money your business is making, whatever that amount is right now, it's showing how much work you were putting in six months ago, not how much work you're putting in today. Basically, not letting your current outcomes dictate how you feel about how you're doing and, and the work you're putting in. So if I continue working really, really hard today, I'll see those results six months from now, not today. So the things I'm doing, it's a very long-term mindset. Also a very good read, a lot of really like applicable things. And yeah, like I said, I'm going to reread that one for sure. Okay, another one that I read fairly recently was Everyday Vitality by Samantha Boardman. This one had a few things that have really stuck with me and it's about, you know, living a full life every single day, that, that idea of vitality, like being full of life. It's taking a look at these little stressors, these little like annoyances that happen every day and how we can overcome those because over time it is those little annoyances that add up to really being unhappy, disliking your situation. And instead of just like trying to overcome little problems every single day, it's like solving those problems. Another big thing I took from that book was when she talked about the three components of feeling like you have a good day. You have to have autonomy, a sense of relatedness, and a sense of competency. That's something where I can look back at like teaching and I had the relatedness. That's kind of it. I had a little bit of autonomy, but not a whole lot, meaning like I wasn't completely in charge of my own day. And then I also did not feel competent because I was a new teacher. And since I was lacking two of those three things, I felt really unhappy most days in my job. I can look at it now at my job and the days where like most of the time I feel pretty competent at it. I have a decent amount of autonomy because within our deadlines, like I know when, how to plan my own day, but I don't have as much relatedness or connectedness. And the days that I don't talk to other people and I don't have that sense of like relation definitely are harder days or I end up feeling less fulfilled. I never heard it explained that way, but it makes so much sense. And my last book recommendation was another really recent read called No Cure for Being Human by Kate Bowler. This one is autobiographical from someone who is a cancer survivor. There's a lot of goodness in it. There's a lot of harsh truth in it. She's just not trying to sugarcoat things. And I think in the pursuit of living my best life, it's important to remember that it will end. You're not promised every day. And whenever you're in a season or a time of life where you're healthy and you're prospering and you're building things, we can forget that so many people are dealing with things that are so hard and outside of their control, like illness, like cancer. I don't know, I really enjoyed her, her perspective on a lot of things. I read this book pretty quickly too, it was really, really good. Those are my five recommendations from 2021. Today's Vlogmas question is gonna be, what is the best book you read in 2021? What's something you would recommend? See, she is so good. She just wants to sit here and chill. I'm going to eat my buffalo mac, probably watch some TV, chill out with this little one, do some editing, prepare myself for a crazy, crazy weekend. Jackson's graduating, got some birthday parties. It's gonna be good. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Say bye.